Hello everyone, welcome to Cam Die Handmade Creations and another tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to make an adjustable hat. So as always, I don't like to dawdle, so let's get started. So I'm going to show you the tools that we have here for today. I'm probably going to change this button, um, but we have a 5mm hook, a darning needle, one button. You can use as many buttons as you want. A uh, stitch marker, Red Heart Category 4 Yarn Forest Green, and a Category Red Heart Category 4 Red Heart Yarn Black. So I'm going to start off, and it's basically we're going to be making just a regular hat. Um, it's a hat pattern with the um, adjustable part added to it. So we're going to start off, I, I'm going to start off with a magic circle. Um, I'm trying to practice how to get this done properly. So for the most part, when it comes to making circles or anything round, I'm going to begin with a um, a magic circle. But you can use whatever you want. You can use a five chain and then just uh, bring your chain together in the fifth hook, uh, in the fifth stitch and then go ahead and double crochet 10 times into your circle so i have my magic circle done i'm going to go ahead and double crochet 10 times into my magic circle um, as i said earlier i am not going to make the whole pattern with you on camera um, most of us know how to make a hat to start off with. If you do not know how to make a hat, you can check out my ruffle hat tutorial. Um, and that shows you the basic of making a hat or making a, yes, or the basics of making a hat and how to uh, increase your rows. So once you, and once you figure that out, then you can come on back here. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and continue making my 10 double crochets into this row. And I'm going to make a circle uh, large enough and I'll be back with a big circle. I think we're going to have about seven or eight rows um, already done when I come back. So get back to me when I, I'll get back to you rather when I get to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm back and I now have, I think it's seven rows that I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's actually eight rows. So I increased my eight rows and then and I continue on up until I continue increasing until row seven. That gave me 70 double crochets going around. And then I put a row of double crochets going around. So now I'm at 70 double crochet rows, double crochets, and I have eight rows of double crochets. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my color here. I want to show you how to change your color on this project here. The way I'd normally do it is I will stop right before that first stitch for the next row. I insert my hook here. I'm going to drop that black yarn and wrap my green yarn around. And I just do a simple slip stitch into this row here before I begin. I'm going to chain. Make sure everything is brought together. I'm going to chain two. And then I'm going to go ahead and begin and making my row of double crochets going around. So I'm going to make my 70 double crochets going around. Make sure that you incorporate your yarn so that you uh, tuck that black yarn in there. Weave that in. Um, and then I'll be back when I have my 70 double crochet rows. I'm going to have a few of them when I come back. Okay, so now I have four rows of those double crochet in green. I'm going to take out my stitch marker. You can incorporate your stitch marker. I only have a stitch marker because I don't want to have a line down my hat. So I put that in there so that I can just continue working in the round. But I at least know where my first stitch is. So now we're going to do a row of decreasing because we need to bring in the hat a little bit more. I made my first double crochet into the first stitch from the previous row. And I'm going to to continue around I'm gonna make 10 double crochets and then when I get to the 11th stitch I'm going to decrease I'm gonna make a double crochet decrease so for now I'm just making these uh, double crochets here and I'll meet you at to the point where we in, uh, decrease 
Okay, so now we're at the point where we want to do our decrease. So go into your next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two stitches only, yarn over again, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three. And that's how you do a double crochet decrease. So we're gonna continue around. We're gonna make 10 double crochets again, do another double crochet decrease and just do that all the way around. And I'm gonna continue doing that until we get to the end. I'll meet you back at the other end with my decreases. Okay, so I'm back. And now I've done a row of decreasing and as you keep going, you're going to notice your, your hat start to come in a little bit. That's what you want. You're shrinking your stitches, you're decreasing your stitches so that it can fit on your head. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see. So now I'm going to continue decreasing. I'm going to do another row of 10 double crochets and a double crochet decrease. And then for my next set of rows, I'm going to do five double crochets across and another decrease. So when I come back, I'll have some more decreases here and I'll have my hat to where I want it to be. Always make sure that you put your stitch marker in your first stitch and I'll be back. Okay, so now I have, I'm at the point where I want to stop decreasing. As you can see, I came in a little bit more, so now I have even less stitches. I want to stop here because this is where you want to check and measure around your head to make sure that it is fitting properly. It can't be too tight because this is an adjustable hat, so we want to make it a little bit big. That way you have the option to adjust it if you want to. So now we're at the brim of the hat. This is where we're going to stop. Um, we're going to continue. We're not going to continue going in the round anymore. We're going to stop here and turn our work. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to remove this stitch marker here. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn my work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the hat um, inside out so we can work our stitches from there. And it makes it a lot easier when you turn it inside out as opposed to having it the other way. That way you can see your stitches better and they lay better when you do it this way. So I'm going to, I already chained one. I'm going to go around this hat with uh, some single crochets, but I'm going to stop at a certain point. So I'm going to count out about, I think it's three or four. It's two, three, four, five. I went back five stitches from the last double crochet from the previous row and I'm going to put my stitch marker here. So I'm going to go in the round and I'm going to stop right here at this uh, at this stitch marker. I'm doing nothing but single crochets now going around and I'll meet you right at that stitch marker. So normally you're going to make your brim as long as you want to. This is your preference. You don't have to do it as long or as wide as I'm doing mine. I'm only going to do a few rows for tutorial purposes so that you can get the gist of how to make the hat. And then you determine how many rows you want to go around with this single crochet. So when I come back again, I'm going to have that many rows. I think I'm going to have about four or five more rows and then we'll continue on. Make as many rows as you want. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're at the section where we're going to continue on. We're going to continue going around the edge of our project because now we want to make that flap that's going to allow you to adjust your hat. So I did uh, made a single crochet. I'm going to put two more crochet, two more single crochets in this same stitch where I made that chain one space. This is the last single crochet of the row. So put two single crochets into that stitch there. This is one and two. And this just allows you to go around that corner a little faster. We're going to add a few more here. That's one. We're going to have a total of five going across. So you count that first one as one. This is two. And like I'm showing you here, this is basically the part that flaps over 
um, to the other side where your button is going to be. So I'm going to put a few more stitches in here. I'm doing up to five stitches, not counting those two that I put in that corner there. Chain one and then turn your work and continue making your row. You can make this portion as long as you want. Just don't make it too long, but you want to make it long enough so that it flaps over the other side over that button there. So when I come back, I'll have all of those rows. Remember, you're going to do five single crochets, chain one, and then turn your work and continue on. Okay, so now I have my flap long enough. I think I have about eight rows here. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So this portion here where I have my left hand is where your button's going to go. And this is the portion that flaps over that makes your hat adjustable. So that, yeah, that's how that's supposed to look. You can put as many buttons as you want. You can make the buttons go as far back as you wanted to. Just make sure you don't compromise the width of the hat so that eventually it won't go on your head if you have it too tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this strand off here. I'm going to pull that through and then we're going to go ahead and work on this button here. I'm going to grab my stitch markers and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I have my button here. I'm going to go ahead and sew this on here. For him to do this on camera, not too many people know how to use a darning needle. But as you can see me showing you here, you can put your as many buttons as you want. You can put even smaller buttons and have two um, in front of the other one at, you know, two at a time. However you want to do that, that's up to you how you do your button. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this button on here. We're going to go around the back of the button and then come up don't pull all the way through go back down I'm making a mistake here I really want to go in the other one I'm going I'm crossing over I'm doing this diagonally so I'm gonna make a little cross go through and come back up if I can get it in I always have a problem with getting needles into these holes and it's huge so I don't see understand the problem anyway so I'm gonna cross over to the other side and then that should be enough because this yarn is fairly thick. If you had a thinner yarn, you might want to go back and do that one more time. So I'm going to pull these two ends on the back and go ahead and tie this up. Um, normally, I would put a little knot in here and then um, clip it off and slap a little bit of super glue in the, you know, the crevices there. Just to make sure that that knot doesn't come out. But I'm going to do that real quick and tie this on very tightly and I'll be back when I have that button on there okay so now I have my button on and I'm going to show you this this is how it flaps over I'm glad I didn't sew that other side use my darning needle on the other side because uh, excuse me I forgot to do the loop for the other side so I'm going to take out this right here I'm going to remove one row because you have to have enough room <laughs> To make your loop to go around your button so I'm going to take these few stitches out here and I'm going to put a single crochet into the first stitch I'm going to chain five two three four was that four okay I only chained four <laughs> and then I immediately went right into the very last stitch or fifth stitch with a slip stitch and then go ahead and pull your yarn up and um, fasten that off and finish going in I'm going to show you how to use your darning needle but as you can see that loop goes around that button really quickly if you want to make it a little tighter you just uh, make less chains instead of making four you'd make three so that it can stay a little tighter but I don't really like my hat to be tight around my head I'll get a headache so now I'm going to go ahead and um, put this yarn in this darning needle thread this needle so that we can go ahead and sew it on and I just want to show you how I sew my um, how I weave in my ends here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go there's a little hole right there I'm going to wrap around this hole a couple of times with the yarn and 
You can do this as many times as you feel secure to. I'm going to flip it around on the wrong side and I'm just going underneath the back of those stitches in the back. Make sure you don't go through the front. I try to go all the way across in a straight line. If you weave in different directions, it's pretty noticeable. So I'm just going to go underneath these stitches here and just continue using my darning needle. And I'm going to come up the sides with it as well. And you just make it however you feel secure. So when I come back, I will have that taken care of and have that tied off. Okay, so I finished weaving in all of my ends, and this is what your hat should look like. You should have enough room in the back to go ahead and adjust it. As I said, you can put as many buttons as you want, but just remember, be mindful of the width of your hat because you don't want to co compromise that when you're adjusting it. You don't want to be too tight. So I want to thank you for watching this tutorial on today. Come back for my next tutorial, which will be the water bottle holder and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cam Tie Handmade Crochet. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.